works this time. I've tried recording this many times, and um, I've been go- I've gone through so many different iterations of it. Someone requested that I kind of show how I draw bodies, and uh, hopefully it works this time. So I'm going to show just quick, very quick concept of shapes, and then we're going to talk about like just posing, and then we're going to talk about anatomy. First off, with shapes. I've seen a lot of videos that already talk about shapes, so I'm not going to go super far into it. All you need to know um, when it comes to shapes is that they're, the main ones are the, the, the triangle, the circle, and the square. Um, and you can make a character with all of these, or with only one, or two, any combination. And they all, um, in art, represent different personality quirks or different concepts of people. Um, a person who's mainly made with um, a lot of squares, you would think of support, or you may even think of stubborn. So usually like bodybuilders or um, like kind of like the cool guy would be that, or maybe someone who's a protector, a knight, a guardian. Um, someone who's uh, made mainly with circles, they are sweet or soft. So children, um, caregivers, motherly or paternal figures, um, kind of like a really nice, kind of just a sweet, naive, innocent person. And then for triangles, just think of spontaneous um, or sinister. People with um, who are mainly made with um, triangles, they are chaotic, they are unpredictable, or they usually end up being some kind of villain in a way because it's sharp, it's angular. Um, so think of someone with like fangs or someone who has claws, um, something like that. I want to show how different a character can actually look if you change the shapes a little bit. Um, so I just have two examples. First one is actually the same character, which this is Amy Rose from Sonic. Um, and I want to show just how different she is. Same person, different shapes. This version of her is very sharp, very angular and more triangles are used. Her dress is just a giant triangle and a square. She's mainly made out of squares and triangles. And obviously there's a circle for the head, obviously. Um, but this character in iteration is, oh, kitty cat. Um, this character is considered more passionate. She's much more, um, she has a fiery temper. She's very angry or, or easy to anger. Um, that's what this version of Amy is. And then you have this version of Amy. And so instead of being sharp, if you look, she's much softer. Um, she still has those triangles for hair and her ears. That's still there, but they're much softer edged. They are not as sharp. Um, the dress that she has is not made of um, triangles anymore. It's made of squares. And most of her body now is made out of squares rather than triangles. And this version, if I'm correct, I believe this is Sonic Boom, I believe, I think I'm right on that. This version of her is much nicer. She's much calmer. She still has kind of a, a little, little porcupine sharp edge to her, but she's much more reasonable. And she, um, even in the show, I believe she's a group therapist and she actually like sits down and talks with people about their feelings. Um, so just want to show if you just change what shape you're going to make them and even change how soft or hard the edges are going to be, the character themselves will actually look different and they will be perceived differently. Now, the next one, um, these are two different characters from uh, Dungeons and Dragons. These are different characters, but they're the same archetype. So it's same archetype, different shapes. These characters are both um, motherly figures but I wanted to show how these shapes play. So I'm gonna just, I'll pick, I'll pick green. Hi, kitty cat. Um, so we have this one on the left. This is Lolth. She's a spider elven goddess. She's evil and mean. She is almost entirely triangles. Everything about her is triangles, right? Everything. I'm not, I'm not even gonna like show all of it, but there's a couple squares here and there, but everything is triangles everything her her own legs have little triangles in them her fangs are triangles um and there's a couple once again a couple square woo a couple squares but it's kind of like her hair is a square these parts of her armor are squares but most of her even the way her eyes are shown 
right here, even they are kind of tilted little triangles. And she's evil, if you couldn't figure that out. She's an evil, evil person. Um, but she is considered like the negative aspect of what a, a maternal archetype would be. She is a liar. She's a deceiver. She's abusive. She is chaos incarnate. She is a goddess of spiders and darkness and shadows and like evil. She's evil. She's an evil person. Then we go over to here. This I think is fan art of this goddess, but it's a but even like it's a perfect example of what this of what this particular goddess is. This is Eilis Ray. This is her. This is Lolt's daughter. And this character, there are still a couple triangles here and there. Like yeah, she's an elf. Elves are chaotic in in general, but she has a softer face. She has a softer nose. She had obviously served. I'm I'm not gonna circle the boobs. You know those are circles. She has these soft features. All of her angles are softer. All of them. Most of her is comprised of circle. Everything. Even the little harp that she has, which I believe she actually does play a harp in the game. Even those have circles. The way her hair itself is a square. It's just like parts together square. Does that make sense? Even the parting in her hair is soft. Everything. This character is a nice maternal figure. So, same archetype, different shapes. And these shapes change how the character is going to be portrayed. If I didn't tell you that and I just said both of these parents are moms, which one do you think is the better mom? You're not going to pick this woman. You're probably going to pick this one. So next we'll do Pose, um, and it's going from gesture to Mannequin. And then we'll go for Anatomy. So, a gesture is the rough movement of your character. There's a line of action, which is just a, a line, and it shows the arc that your body would be. And it could be, it could be like your, it could be like literally the character like falling. Oh, that's terrible. It could be the character like, uh, and they're falling. Uh, or it could be the character is actually like this, but this is their hand. This is the other hand. That's the arc. That makes sense? So it would be like you have this character and let's say he's sitting at a bar. So you would have eh, eh, ooh. You'd have just eh, eh. And there's a little, little glass right there. That's a gesture. It's that. It's really simple. Just get like a little sketch pad, a um, little like pencil, and just draw what you see as quick as you just, I don't know, 10 seconds per person. That's all you have to do. And you'll get better and better at just kind of quick gesture lines. I, um, this is me adding myself in. Hello. Um, so I just wanted to, yeah, I did a quick concept of anatomy that you're going to see, but I wanted to show a bit more on, um, on like just how to do uh, on just like proportions. So this super quick, um, your hands are going to be, um, just below your groin. So if the groin is right here, your hands actually are going to be like, like your fingers essentially just below it. So if you stand up, and I'll do that right now, I'm gonna stand up. If I stand up, my wrist is right below where my groin is. So this is actually where your hand will start. And that is where your hand will be. Um, if you, let me think, if uh, your, I believe it was your torso should be about the same size as your upper leg or your leg, something like that. Don't worry about that part. Um, that's just like the basic, Um, let's see. When it comes to doing arms, your um, both your your upper arm and your uh, forearm are in the, are about the same length. And when I draw them, I would have like a little circle to just show where the shoulder is. And then I would wherever this is, let's say that's the forearm. If I do this little dot to show where the shoulder is, then it should be about the same size for the forearm, roughly the same size. And then this would be where the wrist is. Um, when you try to fill it out, don't worry too much about like going for um, precision on like the this is the bicep and like this is the bicep. That's a tricep. Don't worry, relax. Um, just understand that when you do this, when you're bending, you're gonna be missing this one part, and then that actually helps me with figuring out how this looks. Really bad 
example, but I hope that helps in some way. Um, when it comes to the legs, your um, upper leg is about the is roughly the same size as your lower leg. So if I made this as like my as like the top of my leg, I would have this be my knee, and then I would have this be kind of like my lower leg, roughly the same size, roughly. All right, does that make sense? Okay. Um, and then lastly for the, um, what was it? No, not lastly. Yeah, we all go for the chest and then I'll talk, talk about the head. So the chest, um, let's see, I'll do that right down the middle. So you'll have, say that's where the shoulders would be. I'm just going to draw a little box. This is how I normally, this is how I normally figure things out on my own. Um, so this is where your shoulders would be. So this is actually where your clavicle would be, but right there. And then you would have about a about, mm, little lot slider down. You would have about right here. This is where the chest would be, kind of like where the where the where you see like by um the the pets, right? You have that, and then the sternum goes a little bit further. Actually, mm. all right. I'm gonna draw it at a. I'm gonna draw three quarter angle, just so it's easier. To like see all of my angle all of my bodies are drawn using boxes it's just what i'm used to doing um it's how i learned to draw that it, i tried a couple of ones but hope this works um so i'm gonna draw this to just show like this is the middle line i also know this is where my sternum is going to be so i could just quickly draw like an idea of that i know this is where my ribs are going to end um no or like my upper ribs because i know there's also floating ribs but don't worry um, so then I know about, about halfway up from there, that'll be where the pecs will be, kind of, like that. And then the, if you were to try, if you had to draw the, um, I actually don't know what the name of this muscle is. If you were to draw more muscular characters, you know that this is kind of where that arching muscle would be, and then you can actually kind of figure out, you can start like kind of cutting in. Whoa. You can start cutting in a little bit on like where the on like what the abs will look like. Um, your breasts actually end underneath the armpit, so this is where they actually end. So you now know it's going to be a little softer looking, right? Then um, the way I draw boobs, they're affected by gravity, so I actually draw them kind of like with this being the main, like most of the gravity kind of being oof right here, right? And then I do the same thing, and I try to just show it like that. This is, these are, these are too big for me. This is like, I'd like, let me see. Let me try it one more time. Not, not thinking, just, just do it. Not thinking, just, there we go. So gravity does affect them. Um, if you want to draw boobs that are a little smaller, you just kind of make them a little smaller and you make them more perky so they're actually facing upward more if they're larger they would be kind of hang down more um just naturally as is um you can draw them to be bigger you can draw them to be like thinner there's a bunch of ways to draw them there we go this is kind of like a ball and socket joint and then there is Kind of more stiffer parts of the body so this if you have um parts of your body in this it can move they can move up they can move down they can move side to side and all around those parts of the body are your little are your little your little joints your little in-betweens then you have parts like this where you can't move all the way around if you're like this you could you could maybe bend this way you can bend this way you can bend forward maybe you can bend backward but that's kind of it you can't really move much you're, you're stuck in place this would be like your stomach and then there are other parts like your chest your chest can't move your chest can move enough for your lungs to breathe but you can't make your chest you can't fold your chest you can't those parts or your hips your hips can't really move much they can move side to side they can like, like you can kind of if you had a hip I'm gonna just see if that's a hip like you can kind of move your hip a little that way 
making your little hip roll that way. You can move like your hip forward, but that that's it. You can't you can't bend it. Your chest and your hips do not bend. Your stomach does. Your abdomen does. Your shoulder joints and your hip joints can move in any direction. Your elbows and your knees cannot. They can move one to two directions. They can you can flex or extend. So that's quick and very quick anatomy. So I'm going to show you how I draw just a quick idea of her body. So I'm going to do my line of action. So that's my little line of action. And I'm going to have her head. It's going to be about, ooh. Hello. Her head is going to be about right here-ish, maybe. Well, I'll just be where her head's going to be. Then I'm going to kind of just do that. Because now I know. And then I'm gonna just, like this is my gesture, boom. I draw their body I know she is going to be folding so I'm going to I usually draw using squares because that's how my brain works I for some people they do bean theory or the bean the bean body I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to call it but it's where you have like you literally draw a bean and like that could be your body and then you can if you fold it, it would be a little folded bean. And then you can kind of see like where the bean folds. Or if you want to twist it, you would have kind of like a twisty bean. Like some people do that. And I did for a while, but I was very it was very tough that ironically that just didn't work much for me. If it works for you, awesome. Like that's that's great. But my way of doing it, um, because this is just how I taught this is just how I learned, um, is I kinda make their bodies out of boxes and it kinda it helps me kind of understand a little better about like how I want them to look. So I know about right here is where her chest would be. And now that I know that, this is like what her sternum would be. And then I can kind of like go a little further down and I know this is probably where her ribs would end. Something like that. Then I would do a little ball and socket joint because, or not a ball and socket, not ball and socket joint, sorry. I would just do that to show like I can move her, this is where her bending is. And that kind of lets me know I can, I, I now can bend this. Little bendy bend. Like that. And then I can show where her hips are. Like that. All right. And then, let's see. The hip is odd because there is a, it's not, this isn't like the whole thing. You have, so you have your, you have the bottom of the, of the pelvis and then you have like this arch right here, right? That is the, I believe it's called the iliac crest right here. And it's, it, it confuses you, it tricks you because you think, oh, this is where my hips would be. That's, that's my hips. This is where your hip bone is, roughly. It's not there. It tricks you. It's actually farther down. It's about right here. Then I would just kind of figure out very quickly, like, okay, of that. I'm gonna put her knee right here. Then I'm gonna go right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I have if I have difficulty knowing where I want the arms, the shoulders to be, or like the, the, the legs to be. I can first figure out where one is, so I'll figure out like 
This is where one of them I know would be, roughly. Right? Then I can just take and just fly, just go straight through, straight through the body. And oh, look at that. That's where the other one's going to be. I just kind of go in the same direction. And then it helps me figure out where things are going to kind of end. All right. Same thing with this. Then I can start adding a little bit of my muscle mannequin. I'm not going to worry about how how detailed I'm going to get with this. I don't, I'm not going to worry about, oh, well, I need to make sure I have this quad here and then this quad and then like have that here and then go like that. I don't have to worry about that. Unless you're making a really muscular character, you don't have to worry too much about what, how many muscles there are. You just need to get the rough shape down. And this is a five-year-old child. I'm not going to worry about uh, muscle right now. So I am going to just follow this crest so I know where the legs are. So it's going to be kind of like that. And then I'm going to take this. This is where I know my knee is. And then I also know that if I look at my calf, this part of the calf is actually bigger than this way than the bottom of the knee or the bottom of the leg. So you see this. And then I can just follow it down. Little triangle. It's kind of like that. See? Little little easier, a little better. And for this one, same thing. I'm just gonna do this. Since this is at an angle, the knee is going to look, this lower part is going to look a little different. Instead of having kind of more weight here, it's actually going to be look a little different, like a little thinner, a smidge thinner. So then, for the muscle mannequin part, let's see. I know that I want her to kind of have her, her arm kind of go like that. So I can just kind of, boom. Like that. Again, I'm gonna just do a little because that's where her elbow is. And then I just kind of fill it out. Sometimes what helps me is I actually do a little little see-through, like I make a little circle here for myself. So it's like I know that's where her elbow is. Like I know that's the other part of her arm, and I know it's a little it looks a little different. So I'll do that. Alright. And then, I know if I wanted to go 100% realistic, I would try to get this other hand in and try to do it here. But since I'm not going to do that, I want to exaggerate the pose, I'm going to hide that. And I'm going to instead focus on this hand. So I'm going to just kind of show me briefly. This, I can actually start kind of filling it in a little bit where it's like I want the the, the body's gonna look kind of like that. It's gonna have this sharp angle to it. Let's see. Kind of like that. I'm gonna just fix it up a little bit. a little better. I'm going to do a little, little circle for the ankle. And I'm going to just, because I know this will be like the bottom of her feet. Feet are hard, don't worry. <laughs> feet and hands are hard. Um, I personally think feet are harder than hands because you, like, hands you see every day. You don't see your feet as often as you see your hands. 
So, that's just my opinion. I think that feet are way harder. Um, so I'm gonna do that, and then... Just try to, like, get that as best I can. Alright. And that is roughly my muscle mannequin. This is what the gesture lines, muscle mannequin, skeletons, is what all this turns into. Alright, and last thing I need to do is just figure out what I want her head to look like. So I'm gonna just kind of... The next thing I do on top of that is I'm going to actually start adding detail. So I'm going to add her eyes, kind of rough out her nose, her jaw, her mouth, and then I'm actually going to start adding clothes and I'm going to start fine tuning different parts of the posture and even her feet. So for eyes, there's different ways to do them. I know if you want to do a, um, a more serious eye, you can change the shape. You don't have to do circles, you can do an oval. And then what I do is I actually do one line here if you want to make it serious looking. Um, you can do like one line like this, and then like one eye, one line like this, and then like one, eye like this, one line like this, and then you just kind of like, and then I would just kind of fill it in, so it's like you look like that, and then. And then you do like a little circle for the, for the pupil so you know where the actual pupil's gonna end. So like that's one way to do the eye, right? Um, or if you wanna do kind of a more like cute, happy eye, which is what I'm doing for this character, um, you can, ah, there we go. You can just do a circle. And then I would just, I usually start off like I show like if I want to do, um, if their eye's going to look like it's going in a little bit or if it's just going to go out, but like you can do, you do one like that and then you just kind of do a bridged, like a nice arced one and then one like that and then you just fill it in. And then do this. Big, big people. Big, or big eyelids, big people. There, see? So there's different ways to do eyes. This is how I do them. Um, it's just the way I naturally do them. And I don't really do that thing where people, like, do each individual, like, eyelash. I don't, I don't do that. I wish I could. It's just my, my, my eyes always look weird when I do that, so I, I don't really do it. Alright, for the brow line... I don't know why my tablet's been acting so weird lately. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with my tablet. My tablet's being weird. So I'm going to, instead of doing this harsh kind of angle that you see a lot of, like, um, a lot of anime and character designs do, since she's a little kid, I just kind of, I'm going to just soft it out. I was going to say slowly and softly. I'm going to soft it out. I'm going to go like that. Kind of like that.
All right, so that's just a rough idea of how I actually get just how I draw bodies, how I get them down as best as I can. Um, this isn't perfect. I usually spend like a way too long on drawing like one frame at a time and like one draw one person. This is just a quick, quick sketch. So this character has mainly circle, has some circles here. Um, they, they, well, what was it? When I know when she's standing, her whole neckline is just a circle. Her eyes are big circles. Um, the only parts of her that are the parts of her triangles are like her little, her little, her little ear, because um, she's like a little deformed elf. Um, her hair kind of has these little pointed edges to it, and I use squares mainly to create her body um, and kind of like the sleeves. Uh, I hope that helps in some way. Um, if it doesn't, let me know, and I'll try to I'll make a different video about like just going through. Um, I'm just going through it.